Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, the question posed to these guys from KJV Bible Scope is, is there only one rapture in the Bible, and when does that rapture take place? All right, so the easiest answer is, in my opinion, Matthew 24, verse 31. And it's Jesus speaking. He says, um, And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So we are gathered together. We are lifted up. We ascend up to heaven to meet the Lord in the air. This is the rapture. Pretty simple. And when does it take place? Well, in the context of what Jesus is speaking of here is the end of the world. All right, so the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world. All right, and so when the sun is darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory there's not gonna be any mistake about it everybody's gonna know all the tribes of the earth will mourn men's hearts will be failing them for fear because they know it's the end of this world all right and then of course uh, he sends his angels to gather together the elect and then here in 1 Thessalonians 4, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right. So it's interesting to me. Uh, I just got this comment 30 minutes ago uh, somebody that's never read the Bible says you are not lifted New Jerusalem comes down the Bible is very clear that we are lifted up in the air all right to meet the Lord in the air or we're taken up out of this world and then this world is destroyed and then then we come down with the new city of God, the new Jerusalem. All right, very simple, very simple, straightforward stuff. Easy to understand. And it. I mean, this is all throughout the Bible. If you're not up in the air when the wrath of God comes down on the earth, you're in big, big trouble. All right, consider Second Peter chapter 3. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is parallel with the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, and then we are gathered up into the air to meet the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And of course, the wrath of God is poured upon the earth. This is the fire that comes down from God out of heaven and devours all those that are remaining on the earth, all the unsaved. All right, and so the great, the great supper of the Lord, and where the birds of heaven will feast upon the flesh of kings, and so on and so forth. Very simple, straightforward stuff. I mean, really, it's. It's a very simple and easy question to answer. Now let's listen to this gentleman here on the right give his 
response to that question. Somebody arguing against God's word. So, that being said, many Bible believing Christians believe in something that's called the rapture. Now, the word rapture is not found in the Bible, neither is the word Bible. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. The words deity of Christ are not in the Bible. Those are doctrines that are absolutely in the Bible. There are many terms that are used by Bible believing Christians to give a label to something that is a complex doctrine. So we all understand what the, the word rapture means, but the word rapture is not in the Bible. So we want to point to that. Okay. The idea of rapture, the idea is that the Lord Jesus will come again for his believers and will take them out of this world instantaneously for this. This is the blessed hope. That book, Blessed Hope, is from Brother James Lodge, explains the whole thing in detail. The blessed hope has been ridiculed and ignored by many churches, many denominations, because they don't understand scripture. They don't understand, they don't divide God's word. The content of what we call rapture is very well established in the pages of the word of God. Hebrews 11, 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him. Well, before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. All right, so let's go there. Um, I forget what what was that? Hebrews eleven. Um, yeah, Hebrews eleven. I, you know, I love this chapter. Now, faith is the substance of those things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaks. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him all right so let's take a look at this um, verse 5 here by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death now it's incredible to me this is not talking about the rapture at all uh, of course it I would say it's it's uh, quite insane it's completely illogical nonsensical to use this verse as something relating to the rapture Um, it, it's incredible. I, I don't know why you, Why in the world would you do that. I don't know. I, I can't explain why somebody would point to this. There are so many places that you could point to in regards to the rapture. Alright, let, let me just give you another example here. I gave you a 2, 3. We can go to, we can go to Matthew 24, Mark 13. Even Luke 21, we can go to uh, we can go to Matthew 13, I believe it is, the parable of the wheat and the tares. No, yeah, where the the wheat is gathered into the barn, right? But gather the wheat into my barn, which is in heaven, right? And then. The tares on earth are put in bundles and burned, right? Then New Jerusalem, the barn, is it, set back down on the new earth with new heavens. I mean, this is cons consistent all throughout the Bible. This here, in Hebrews 11, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. He went from life to death. He did not experience death. He did not go through the phase 
short or long, of dying. He did not see death. He just went from, like what we are right now, alive, to just without any knowledge of death. There's no other way to view this. There is no other possible logical way to view this. All right, so the, the problem is, all right, the, the, you're basically saying that the Bible is a lie when you make this claim that somehow the Enoch was raptured. It never even suggest or anything this idea that he was raptured is it's ridiculous it's ridiculous now let's go to John chapter 3 Jesus says no man has ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven all right no man has ascended up to heaven only Jesus has ascended up to heaven. He's the only one. He's the only one that has died and then rose from the grave and ascended up to heaven. He's the only one. Alright, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Understand this a little bit better. In 1 Corinthians 15, we read, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. So, taking this, knowing this, and understanding it, there's no possible way that Enoch ascended to heaven before Christ. There's no way that he was raptured before Christ. There's, it's not possible. Every man in his own order. Well, what you're teaching is disorder. And there's no reason for it. There's no reason for it. it this is so simple and easy in regards to the rapture. Why would you go to something that is not even talking about the rapture? And claim this is the rapture. It's not. All right, then. All right, let's, let's listen a little more. From one place to another place, or another form, one form to another form, Enoch was translated. Now, the word translate is only used three times in the Bible. Every time something is translated, it's made better. That's for another night. We know from the book of Genesis that Enoch escaped death. He did not enter the grave, he did not enter death was taken directly to God into heaven because he believed God. That's the idea that a living man who has pleased the Lord by putting faith in him can be taken from earth to heaven without dying. It's really hot. The Old Testament. Second James chapter two verse eleven it came to pass as they went on and talked that behold, the spirit of carried the fire, and the horse of fire, part the bolt of thunder, and the light you went out by a whirlwind. Number two prophet Elijah did not die he was taken yeah he did die he did die in he's dead now and so is Enoch and ne neither one of them are in heaven for as in Adam all die is that true even so in Christ shall all be made alive is that true but every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Is that true? If that's true, then this man is a liar. Okay? So who are you going to believe? God or this man? It's really a choice though, that you're going to you're going to have to make. I mean, really. Are you going to choose men over God? 
then let that be on you. But for me, I'm choosing God. These words come directly from God above. I have no doubt, of, no doubt about it at all. None whatsoever. And the, this is true. These words are true. Every man in his own order, right? As in Adam all die, that means Enoch died. That means Elijah died. There's nothing in the Bible that says they did not, or that they are not dead now. Okay? In um, Hebrews 11, It simply says, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, don't you? He did not see death. He did not see death. Okay, okay, so when you're dead, you don't see anything at all. When you're alive and you are dying, you see your death. You go through that phase of death. We all go through it. It's appointed unto man once to die and then after this, the judgment. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So Enoch was translated. He was changed in an instant from life to death. And nothing at all, nothing at all about ascending to heaven. Nothing at all. I mean, this, does, this doesn't even suggest, it's the opposite of the idea that Enoch is still alive. He was translated from life to death because he was wasn't found because God had translated him from life to death. There's no other possible way to look at this. Let's go to Second Kings chapter two. All right, we got to start on verse one because I mean, if you don't understand the context. Uh, yeah, I mean, you might get fooled by this stuff here. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with, went with Elijah. Am I saying that right? Is there a better way to say that? Let me see how this gentleman says. Second Kings two. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Elisha. Right, let me say it. Elisha. Elijah. Elisha. Okay, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha. I still can't say it right. I want to say it with distinction. Second Kings 2. Elisha. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from... Elisha, I'll just I'll try my best to say Elisha from Gilgal. All right, so from Gilgal, all right, so they went Elijah and Elisha, Elijah and Elisha. Forgive me if I if they sound too similar. Okay, from Gilgal. All right, so let me just make this easy rather than read this and stumble over it. They went from Elijah and Elisha went from Gilgal to Bethel. Gilgal, Bethel, and then Jericho. Okay. You follow along here? And then to Jordan. And then this is where Elijah took off, and Elisha, Elisha, was left. Okay, and this is what we read in verse 11. And it came to pass, as they went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and part of them both asunder, and part of them both asunder, split them up, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Just like what we read here. In verse 1, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with 
Elisha from Gilgal. Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, Jordan. This, they took a little, uh, like a little tour, if you will. Now this idea that they ascended, that, or I'm sorry, that Elijah ascended to heaven is now, and has never died, that's not supported. It doesn't say that Elijah never died. And if it did, then you'd have to throw the whole Bible into the garbage can because it would be no good at all. Because it would be a contradiction to what we read here in 1 Corinthians 15, as in Adam all die. So you're saying, oh, they all die except for Elijah? You can't have, it doesn't work both ways. In fact, I mean, you look at it. It never says Elijah died. Or I'm sorry, it never says uh, that he's still alive. It never says that he died, but we know that he died. We know that he's dead. Right now he's dead. It never says that he's still alive. It never says one way. It never says the other way. But what it does say is that as in Adam all die. And it even says that it is appointed unto man once to die. And then after this, the judgment. So as it is appointed unto men once die, but after this, the judgment. As in Adam all die, as in Adam all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So there's no possible way to say that Elijah is still alive today. Right? Every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ that is coming. You have to ignore this. And you're essentially saying that this part of the Bible is wrong. Uh, you're just be honest with yourself, man. Just be honest with yourself if if that's what you believe. But I'm telling you, the Bible's right, and this man is wrong. And it's beyond me why somebody would point to Enoch and Elijah in regards to the rapture. It makes no sense to me. Neither one as was raptured. Neither one. Neither one is alive today. Neither one. Neither one. So why would you why would you even point to those guys? It doesn't make any sense to me. And obviously, uh, Matthew twenty four is the clearest example of the rapture. I don't know how anybody doesn't see it. Well, other than that they don't believe what it says. They don't believe what God says. They don't believe the word of God. That's the only way. So anybody asking anything about the rapture, it's as clear as day right here in Matthew 24. Clear as day. Of course, we can go to Mark 13 as well. I don't think I've done that yet. Mark 13. Let's go to Mark 13. And this is parallel with Matthew 24. Right? And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. We are lifted up at the last day. Right? Is, that a, is that a verse lifted up? last day lift last is that, is that in the Bible anywhere no no uh, what is that what verse is that that I'm thinking of right there it is okay and this is the father's will which has sent me that of all which he has given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. This is the rapture that happens at the last day. I mean, it's 
crystal clear. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that, which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Clear, obvious, simple. Uh, straightforward Bible scripture that talks about the rapture. <laughs> and no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. Right? And whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Right now. And I will raise him up at the last day. Right? So, I mean, it's, it's very simple, straightforward stuff. You could be the biggest dummy on earth and understand the simplicity of Christ. 